The pre-Reformation era laid the groundwork for mass revival in the 16th century. Many paid the ultimate price for not compromising the truth. These are their stories. When John Huss had spoken these words, it was demanded of him whether he had received absolution of the Pope or no. He answered no. Then again whether it was lawful for him to appeal unto Christ or no. Whereunto John Huss answered, Verily, I do affirm here before you all, that there is no more just or effectual appeal than that appeal which is made unto Christ, for as much as the law doth determine that to appeal is no other thing than in a cause of grief or wrong done by an inferior judge, to implore and require aid at a higher judge's hand. Who is then a higher judge than Christ? Who, I say, can know or judge the matter more justly or with more equity, when in him there is found no deceit, neither can he be deceived? Or who can better help the miserable and oppressed than he? While John Huss with a devout and sober countenance, was speaking and pronouncing those words, he was derided and mocked by all the whole council. These excellent sentences were esteemed as so many expressions of treason, and tended to inflame his adversaries. Accordingly, the bishops appointed by the council stripped him of his priestly garments, degraded him, put a paper mitre on his head, on which was painted devils with this inscription, a ringleader of heretics, which, when he saw, he said, My Lord Jesus Christ, for my sake, did wear a crown of thorns. Why should not I then, for his sake, again wear this light crown, be it ever so ignominious? Truly I will do it, and that willingly. When it was set upon his head, the bishop said, Now we commit thy soul unto the devil. But I, said John Huss, Lifting his eyes towards the heaven, do commend into thy hands, O Lord Jesus Christ, my spirit, which thou hast redeemed. When the chain was put about him at the stake, he said with a smiling countenance, My Lord Jesus Christ was bound with a harder chain than this for my sake. And why then should I be ashamed of this rusty one? When the faggots were piled up to his very neck, the Duke of Bavaria was so officious as to desire him to abjure. No, said Huss. I never preached any doctrine of an evil tendency, and what I taught with my lips I now seal with my blood. He then said to the executioner, You are now going to burn a goose, hus signifying goose in the bohemian language, but in a century you will have a swan which you can neither roast nor boil. The flames were now applied to the faggots when our martyr sung a hymn with so loud and cheerful a voice that he was heard through all the cracklings of the combustibles, and the noise of the multitude. At length his voice was interrupted by the severity of the flames, which soon closed his existence. Then with great diligence, gathering the ashes together, they cast them into the river Rhine, that the least remnant of that man should not be left upon the earth, whose memory, notwithstanding, cannot be abolished out of the minds of the godly, neither by fire, neither by water, neither by any kind of torment.